What's up guys? So we're talking about this subject again. I wanted to let you know just kind of as a disclaimer before I get into this. With this subject matter, I don't really want to hold anything back as far as the terms that I use. This is kind of for educational purposes. I wanted to uh, let you know that ahead of time so that, you know, you can use your discretion based on whether you think that this is appropriate for you uh, to watch as we go forward. I think the title speaks for itself. It's about NoFap and prostate cancer. So I'm making this video with two assumptions here. One, that you understand what NoFap is. If you don't, it's a quick Google search. Two, of course, that you understand for the most part what prostate cancer is. A lot of the study results that I've looked at actually seems to conflict with each other a lot of the time. There are a few studies that say if you masturbate frequently in your 20s and 30s, you actually increase your chance to obtain prostate cancer, but then that kind of diminishes that risk uh, once you hit like your 50s. So it's very specific. But then of course there are other studies that say completely abstaining will increase your risk. However, I found that there are a few studies, like for example, the 2004 study uh, titled Ejaculation Frequency and Subsequent Risk of Prostate Cancer, and the 2003 study sexual factors and prostate cancer. Their conclusions holistically found that their results suggested that ejaculation frequency is not necessarily related to an increased risk of prostate cancer. So I figure, okay, you know, the medical field is pretty torn on this, uh, but I am still very curious as to whether uh, NoFap can harm you in this sense, because this is one of the main reasons actually that I've come off of the journey myself many times before. And so I wanted to go further into it and, and see what's up. From the looks of it with prostate cancer in a general sense, there was kind of this misconception uh, in the field that heightened levels of testosterone caused prostate cancer. So doctors would prescribe their patients anti-androgen pills like flutamide, which would lower your testosterone levels to very minimal amounts, but they apparently didn't work because of that. They actually ended up working because they lowered estrogen levels as well. So actually some of the more notable hormones in heightened amounts uh, in males that cause prostate cancer are said to be estrogen, you know, the female hormone, DHT, the hair loss hormone, and cortisol, the stress hormone. And you might be thinking, oh, well, that's great, Harry. You know, that's that's fantastic. Hey, now I can sleep better knowing that I don't have an imbalance of estrogen, DHT, and cortisol in my system, but what does that have to do with NoFap? So I'll actually tell you, right? So there was a stalemate, actually, in the NoFap kind of community uh, based on whether or not it was actually true that your testosterone levels increased when you were on NoFap for at least a prolonged period of time. Because there was at least this one study in China that was performed with 28 volunteers where for seven days they abstained from masturbation. And the study was there to essentially determine what your testosterone levels were at that point after the seven days. So ultimately that study found that between the second and fifth day, fluctuations of testosterone levels were negligible. However, on the seventh day, they were spiked up to about 145.7% of baseline testosterone levels. But then after that point, if the individual so chose to continue their abstinence, testosterone levels would actually go back to the baseline. So they would spike up kind of up to the 145.7%, very specific number I know, but then it would then go back down pretty drastically back to the baseline, right? So, but essentially, right, there was a new study that came out that covered a three week period of sexual abstinence. And the focus of the study was actually on endocrine responses to masturbation induced orgasm in healthy men. But the conclusion found ultimately that acute abstinence does not change the neuroendocrine response to orgasm but does produce elevated levels of testosterone in males. And it says that definitively at the end of the three week period of study. My camera just ran out of battery, so I'm using my phone for the rest of this. So anyways, we know now, if you're still with me on this, that uh, testosterone levels being increased uh, actually helps to sort of prevent uh, from prostate cancer in a way. And we know that from these studies, testosterone levels likely actually go up uh, probably on a gradual basis uh, if you remain on no fat for a prolonged period of time. And so that's fair and all, but I think one of the last more important arguments to this is whether you should kind of clean out your pipes, so to speak, 
as you go along this process, whether that's necessary or not. And I actually found that that is not necessary. The medical consultant, Chris Smith, who specializes in clinical microbiology and virology at Cambridge University, was interviewed on this topic uh, while participating on the radio show Investigating Infertility. <laughs> Very appropriate, right? So let's just listen to what he has to say real quick, and then we'll get back to this. We've also heard from Natasha, who wants to know, um, what happens to all the sperm that isn't ejaculated? Um, where does it go, and is it still healthy? Yes, it's a very good question, because obviously the testes make sperm. They make sperm at about 5,000 sperm a second at peak, so they can make sperm at prodigiously fast rates, um, and they put that sperm into what are called the seminal vesicles, which are structures up inside the body. So sperm are made at a lower temperature, the testicles, which that's why they're outside the body, because the temperature is about one degree lower. But then the sperm are best stored and kept viable inside the body at body temperature, 37 degrees. So they go into these seminal vesicles, they're nourished there, they have various components of semen, which has got fructose and other sugars and things in it to keep the sperm healthy. They can survive for quite a long period of time inside the body, but eventually they will fatigue and they will age. And of course, all the things that you take into your body, cigarette smoke, other toxins and things, will damage the sperm potentially, so they have a sort of recycle time. So sperm that have reached their sell-by date get scavenged back and broken down in the same way that, say, blood cells get broken down. And basically, any of the nutrients and goodies in the sperm just get recycled back inside the body and new sperm are produced uh, to make up for the shortfall. So it's a kind of continual sort of replacement, really. And exactly. Those, those that don't leave the body eventually break down and are scavenged back. So I'm going to close off this video by saying to you guys what semen actually has within it, what kind of nutrients you can expect to be absorbed, reabsorbed into your body if you abstain. I'm just going to read off of this article on greatest.com, and I'll link all this stuff below, by the way. And basically it says that semen is only 1% sperm. The rest is composed of over 200 separate proteins, as well as vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C, calcium, chlorine, citric acid, fructose, lactic acid, magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, vitamin B12, and zinc. Levels of these compounds, including sperm count and mobility, vary depending on age, weight, and lifestyle habits like diet and exercise. So based on what you eat, what you put in your body, how you treat yourself physically, the more concentrated these nutrients will be in your semen, right? And so that will be reabsorbed in your body. I do believe that we produce semen faster than it can be reabsorbed in the body. As Chris Smith was saying, it does take a little bit of time for that to happen, that process. So inevitably, at the end of the day, you're going to experience wet dreams. It's just a very natural thing. That is, of course, if you're on no fat, I'm just saying. And so actually, the last thing I'm going to say is that I am back on no fat. I did go off because of this reason, and I'm back on it, and I've been back on it for almost a month now, uh, and I'll kind of be making more videos on this, depending on the reaction to this video, whether you guys like this kind of content or not. Otherwise, I will stick to, you know, uh, just my, I guess, other kinds of random content that I throw out there. But I hope you guys thought this was informative. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys around.